Hello, welcome to Head Squeeze. I'm Rob Bell. In this live experiment, we're asking the question, how do trains go around bends? Now, last time you were on a train, you might have heard the train screech, make a really loud screeching sound when it's going around a corner sometimes. Don't worry, it's all normal. It can be quite annoying if you're trying to listen to your music or read your book, but it's there for a very good reason. Train wheels are different to the wheels you find on, say, cars or bikes, and they're different because they've got a ridge running all the way around the outside. That ridge is called a flange, and it's there to help prevent the train from sliding off the track. But that screeching noise is what you get when that flange rubs up against the side of the rail. You've got a metal-on-metal -metal contact, and it makes a loud noise. But train wheels are different in another way as well, and that's what this experiment is all about. For this, you're going to need some large plastic cups, four of those, an empty bottle, some scissors, some old hosing that you might just have, some gaffer tape, normal wheels that you might think of as a car, kind of uniform disc shape like this gaffer tape, and it just happily roll along. Train wheels are different. They're a kind of truncated cone shape, slightly tapered, so that you've got a larger circumference at one end than you do on the other end. And it's this little detail that's a piece of engineering genius that allows trains to go around corner. And this demo is going to show us why and how. To get started, we need to put down some rails. For our rails, we're using our garden hose. We're going to stick these down to the table using some gaffer tape. Then we're going to start to bend it ever so slightly. But you want to make sure that it's about one and a half cups lengths away from the other one. So about there. That should work. So start it off going straight again at the end of the bend. Right, we've laid our track down. Now we need to make our model train wheels. Now and this is where the demonstration all comes in because we're going to have three sets of wheels with different designs that we're going to trial out on our tracks to see which ones go around the corners best. Our first model is ready to go. It's uh, our empty plastic bottle and it's got straight edges. We're then going to use our plastic cups and we're going to do two different designs with these. We're going to tape two plastic cups together so that the big ends are in the middle. And for our third design, we're going to do exactly the same, but we're going to tape the smaller ends together in the middle, like that. There are our three model sets of train wheels that we're going to send down our tracks to see which one stays on the rails better as it goes around the corner. First up, the flat wheels. Let's see what happens when that goes down. Not much, it pretty much goes straight on. Let's try these with the small ends in the middle. Okay, off it goes. Oh, well that's completely rubbish. It came off halfway down and started turning the wrong direction. Okay, finally, our model with the big ends taped together in the middle. Let's see what happens. Oh, no, that's much better. That pretty much stayed on till the very, very end when the curve got got quite severe. So it was this model here that worked best. We're going to find out exactly how in a minute. But if you liked what you've seen here and you want to see more of it, subscribe to the whole Head Squeeze and Live Experiments channel. You can do it right here. The buttons are there. What all three of these are modeling are two wheels on a fixed axle. The fact they're on a fixed axle means that the two wheels are fixed onto the axle in the middle. So that if one turns, the other has to turn at exactly the same speed. And that's great for when you're going in a straight line. Down it goes. But if we want to go round a bend, because the outer side of the bend is longer than the inner side, you need this wheel on the outer side to turn faster. But it can't do that because they're on a fixed axle. So the other way to get wheels on a fixed axle going round a bend is to have that wheel there bigger than the inner one. Now, this time we've got a much bigger, a sillily, stupidly bigger wheel on the outside than we do on the inside. And if we let go of that, it will only turn. It just wants to turn. No surprises, really. You'd expect that. So hang on. Let's get this straight. On a train, when you're going straight, you need wheels of the same size going around at the same speed. But when you come to a bend in the track, you need a bigger wheel on the outer edge of, edge of the bend than you do on the inside. Well, I've never seen anybody go out and change wheels halfway through a chain journey. That's not what happens. It's the fact that the wheels are actually tapered that allows us, that allows trains to go around corners. 
Now, let's go back and have a look at what actually happened with our most successful model as it went down the track. So it started going straight with our axle here and our wheels in the middle so that you've got the same circumference of our cups here going down the straight bit. And unsurprisingly, it goes straight on, perfect. Comes to the bend, our wheels on this side or what's the, the part of the cup that's in contact with the rail is a much smaller circumference. And on this side, as it rolls down, the part of the cup that's in contact with the track gets bigger because of the fact that they're a truncated cone. And that is the small piece of engineering genius that allows trains to go around bends.